We should probably add for listeners that you were born in Bombay and you spent some of your, you've, you've divided your time, your youth, so to speak, between the USA and India. Mm-hmm. And I wondered what the state of homegrown science fiction is like in India. Do you, do you see it as having a strong presence over there? Are other young people looking on their um, tradition mm-hmm. and their culture as being a good source of ideas for science fiction? Or are you blazing a trail here? No, actually, in India, there is a lot of science fiction material out there. It's really based on the culture, based on the mythologies of uh, Hinduism and um, some of Buddhism as well. Yes. So Hinduism is such a vast subject where you have various stories, various gods, various uh, origins of uh, creation, etc. Mm-hmm. So... You know, each writer over there has uh, taken on uh, one particular idea, be that the idea that, you know, the world is a dream, the universe is a dream, um, or the idea that, uh, you know, the idea of incarnation, that's yeah. another example. Yes. So a lot of science fiction, I would say, not truly hard science fiction, but, you know, they incorporate uh, genres of fantasy and um, other subgenres of uh, fantasy. So it's not totally science fiction, but I think there's a there is an emergence over that. Wonderful to hear that. It seems that in a lot of sci-fi, though it's set in the future, the story actually is just trying to get us to think about current day problems. And obviously, as our technology changes, um, we face new problems. What kind of problems are you trying to get us to think about in your upcoming story? What kind of themes mm-hmm. are the protagonists facing mm-hmm. that reflect current day issues? Yeah, um, when I started writing the story, I didn't have any particular idea as to what I would try to comment on. But once I started with the second draft, um, I was in India at that time, and I was kind of influenced by the, the September 11th uh, attacks because mm-hmm. I, was around, uh, I was around 11 or something at that time. Mm-hmm. And it really influenced me a lot. And the and and the way that that date actually divided was like pre 9/11 and post 9/11 kind of thing. Oh, indeed, yes. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to explore themes. After I, I I started reading the first draft, I saw the connections, and I decided, you know what, let me see what I can uh, explore over here. And so I incorporated themes of uh, xenophobia, the way that vampires and humans, you know, humans really hate the vampires and vice versa. Mm. And one of the protagonists in the story wants to accept uh, some of the vampires who are friendly to the human cause. And so he wants to incorporate them into society. But then there are a lot of people who don't like that because, you know, he is the so-called enemy. So I, I wanted to include that because I, I went through that in, in some ways where because I come from a different background, you know, I, I kind of face that kind of stuff. So I wanted to include that. And a lot of the politics that are involved, I kind of base it on, um, you know, the Bush administration, some of the Obama administration. So, you know, I, and I wanted to comment on the idea of why are we going to war? What's up with the war in Iraq, war on terror, so-called war on terror? So I wrote, you know, the, the idea of uh, humanity wanted to come back, the idea of the war. So there are a lot of different factions in the story which are for the war and against the war. So it's sort of like a mirror for society. Something that I found very interesting about the way Falsifier begins, you have a number of prologues in which you introduce a number of different characters, mm-hmm. good, evil, indifferent vampires humans etc and that actually does reflect what you've just said in terms of we are basically allowed to see these characters on their own terms mm-hmm. and not really oh this character's evil we're, we're sort of allowed to make up our own minds about them as individuals the way i've, I've written the story for the first two books and i'm, I'm continuing in the same voice is I'm not at really, least uh, commenting. Uh, I'm commenting on who's good or who's evil. You know, that I, I'm just presenting mm-hmm. the facts and the, the different characters. So I kind of switch scenes between mm-hmm. the so-called protagonists for the vampires and the so-called protagonists for the humans. So I'm looking at both ways, and I mm-hmm. present it in both ways. So 
there might be times where the reader might actually empathize with the vampires in certain scenes. So I, I didn't want it to be, you know, like a clean cut good versus evil sort of thing. The quote that I used at the beginning from your own notes, Delson, it ends, where is this leading science fiction? Do you have any thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I think that there might be a, how should I say, a reawakening of science fiction in, of, the, of the 1950s mm-hmm. and 60s. Because I, I consider science fiction in totality as a commentary on life. Whether it's you know science fiction or any other fiction, the writer is out there to convey some sort of message, something that he's passionate about. And I think science fiction should be like that. And I think and I hope that uh, the future of science fiction will be such. How do you think that uh, science fiction has changed from perhaps... Mm-hmm. the past writers like Isaac Asimov. I think science fiction has changed in the sense that uh, now they're incorporating a lot of other subgenres and uh, genres from, like, example, um, um, horror or um, fantasy. Mm-hmm. And uh, we really need to keep up with our present, uh, present world because uh, our world, our present world, is actually science fiction for people a hundred years ago. So we, we really need to kind of change our strategy when we're writing science fiction because, you know, every five years, every 10 years, there's a new sort of technology. And so you really have to think out of the box. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you, Delson. And I, and I do have to say, I enjoyed reading the excerpts from your novels on your website very, very much. It's been a great pleasure speaking to you this morning. Same here. <laughs>